told him to do, and he's out there doing what he feels like God wants him to do. And he's absolutely right. You need to find out what the Lord wants you to do and do it with all you got. And he'll make the way happen. And uh, it's, it, it doesn't matter whether you till, you plant, you water. Uh, the Lord gets the glory out of the whole thing anyways. It's all about him. Uh, the blessing is that he gives us the privilege of just being part of it. And uh, I like that, man. I like it. It's, it's hard to do that sometimes because sometimes you feel like you're all by yourself and nobody's around you and, and the Lord's done forgot you and you're just all alone. All alone. And you're not. Uh, he's never, he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said, he's done said that. So you just got to remember that he's always there. And just because he doesn't say something today doesn't mean he's not there. Uh, he's already told you what to do. So just do what he told you to do. And the next time he wants you to do something, he'll do it. So Brother Howie, I will turn this over to you. This is our missionary to, to the Philippines. And he's going to come up and he's, I'll ask him if he'd preach tonight. I was going to try to get him to preach Sunday, but he had other commitments. So uh, I just said, well, hey, we'll get him tonight. Amen, brother. It's yours. Amen. I appreciate y'all praying. Um, the Philippines is still closed. I have applied for an exemption. So we need to pray that, uh, uh, in the department of the DWSD, whatever that acronym means. They are uh, dragging their feet. So is this thing ready to go? Are, are we all right? All right, cool. So the sound man's happy, so everybody else is happy. Amen. But I, I pray for that one fella or that one lady that, that, that needs to make a decision and needs to move. Because I need to get over there and we need to get some stuff going. And um, it's a blessing to me to see the Lord take the men that are. The, the goal should be of, of every missionary uh, is an indigenous work. That means that just like the, the ministries of Anchor Baptist Church are taken care of by the, by the members of Anchor, Anchor Baptist Church, then what we want is indigenous churches that, are, that, are, that have a vision for their own people, that have a desire to get the, get the gospel to their community, just like you do. Just like we, that the Bible is true whether you're American or Filipino or Eurasian, you, know, you name it. Amen. Russian, it doesn't matter. Yugoslav, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Amen. Of course, I guess there's no Yugoslavs now. But <laughs> Anyway, so, so I appreciate y'all praying for, for that aspect because we sure do need uh, the Lord to do something. If he'll do it, it'll get done, we'll, and we'll, it'll, be, it'll be a blessing. I'm, I'm ready to go, but uh, until they open the doors, there's no way we can do anything. And so we've tried. We've tried every, every possibility, and I, you know, uh, Brother Dax Barday, who's kind of the main man now with radio stations, uh, he's gotten close to Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao's running for president. And Darryl, Brother Darrell um, Yap is, uh, he's real good friends with Brother, Brother Dax, and Brother Darrell is the main advisor for Manny Pacquiao. In other words, if Manny Pacquiao wants to make a decision about something, he talks to Darrell first. And so we, I, we even tried that out. I said, Matt, can you get a hold of Manny Pacquiao and see if he can get us an exemption? Nothing so far, but, but uh, we're trying. Amen, trying. So anyway, it's, it's a blessing. I'm looking forward to watch tonight's service because they got finger food, right? Amen. <laughs> Matthew 22, if you open your Bibles to that. Matthew 22. And I, I need something. Does anybody have a penny on them? In our day of, of uh, uh, no, you know, I, I haven't figured out why there's a, there's a problem with coins, but I need a penny. Oh, I need an old one. Just as old as Paul. This one, let's see here. This one looks dirty even one? dirty, yeah. Yeah, this is this pretty good. This pretty good. I got away without without a penny this morning or this afternoon. I need to borrow one. All right, Matthew chapter 22, verse 15. Matthew 22, verse 15. The Bible says, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they said out unto him their uh, disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute to, unto Caesar or not? But Jesus, perceiving their wickedness, said, uh, 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 wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Shew me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscripture? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things 
that are, uh, which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God's. When they heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Father, thank you for today. Lord, thank you for a book that gives us light outside of ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for your work in our lives. And I pray, Lord, that you take this time this evening. Lord, thank you so much for the assembly of the, the brethren. Thank you, Lord, for a place to assemble. Thank you for heat and comfort and, Lord, all the many blessings you put on our, in, our, in our ways. But, Lord, uh, if you don't bless this time, if you don't come and, and speak to hearts, Lord, it, this will be a vain time. But, Lord God, we just rest in thee and trust thee and know that you're able to do exceeding above all that we ask or think. And we'll thank you, Father, and pray it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Amen. Um, it's amazing the Lord when he deals. I love reading about what he, how he deals with folks. I'm looking forward to sitting at his feet and let him teach some things. Amen. One of these days real soon. I don't know if you thought about this, but it won't be too long, I don't think, that we're going to hear his voice for the first time. <laughs> It'll be come up hither. Amen. I, that, I, I don't know what it's going to sound like. I don't know the timber of his voice. I'm sure it's majestic and wonderful. Amen. But when he's dealing with the Pharisees here, they're trying to trick him up in his, wor in his words. And, you know, every time they try to trick him up, he just slammed them. He put the hammer on them and wiped them out, confused them, and, and, and messed, them up, up, messed them up. So there's some things you learn from this passage. One, pay your taxes. Amen, amen, amen. That, 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 I said, Brother Howard, do you like taxes? No. Who does? Nobody does. But that's, but that, but I mean, the Lord's talking about it. He said, yeah, I got to get, you got to give tribute to him, tribute to him. I like to say this about just kind of an introduction. The, uh, the Pharisees were always tripped up in verse 15. Why, did, why was that? They had a bad heart. You see, the way you approach the Lord and the way you approach his word determines how he's going to respond to you. Amen. Amen. You come to the Lord with an honest, open heart, man, he will pick you up and help you out. And you sneak in the back door with a, with, a, with a bad heart, a crooked heart, then I tell you what's going to happen. He's going to trip you up just like he did with the Pharisees. Amen. The Lord, and it's made this book because it's his word. When you open this Bible up, begin to read in it, it speaks to your heart the way your heart comes to it. Supernatural book. And I, I like this. Look in verse 20 and 21. The Lord's logic. He, he, verse 20. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God. Their mouths just kind of hit the floor. Uh, how, did he, how did he know to say that? He's just, listen, he's just a carpenter. Amen? He's just an ordinary guy as far as they could see. But he opened his mouth, and, and the wisdom that came out, because he wasn't just a carpenter. He wasn't just a man. He was God. Amen. Amen. He's God. So verse 19 is kind of my text. If you look in the verse he says, uh, shoo me the tribute money, and they brought unto him a penny. Now, I've got a penny here. This one is a 1994. If it was 64, we'd have something. Amen. Because 1964 is the, is, is, the, is the demarcation. That's when they, start, they stopped making pennies out of 100% copper, and they started making them out of, uh, I think it's uh, lithium, not lithium, but the zinc. It's zinc and with a copper coat. So, but, but we're going to talk about a little bit about, uh, about a penny or maybe one red cent. Amen. Now, if you, if, if you collect coins, then, then the coins that people like to collect as far as a penny is concerned, it's called, it's called a wheat penny. Amen. So, do you know if you have an Indian head penny, so it's, on one side it's got an Indian on it, Indian head, it's worth a dollar? That's a thousand percent increase. That's a pretty good deal. Amen. If you if you find a 1922D wheat penny, then you have $195 in your hand. In the in the shape of one little penny. If you got a penny from 1912 and it's an S wheat penny, it's worth $300. If you get a 1923 wheat penny, it's worth $750. If you get a 1944 steel wheat penny, you got $100,000 in your hand. Amen. Now, you know what everybody's going to go do this evening? They're going to go home and get a magnet. 
And they can run. Amen. Because if you find one, you got something. Amen. That's a small thing. You ever think about this? Who has despised a day of small things? So I'm not much of a not much of a man of God, quote unquote. That's all right. Can you just be God's man? Amen. It's not the big things of this world that the Lord's looking for. It's the little things. And God will take a little effort. and God will take a little sweat and a little, a little time from you. And he'll bless it and use it and prosper it. Amen. Little things. Little things. Can I say this? Our economy is based on one penny, one cent. I mean, I mean how far are we in debt? Who knows? <laughs> but, our, but the basis of our whole economy you know, we, our gross domestic, domestic product is what, $4.3 trillion? I, so how big is that? I, how much is that? I haven't got a clue. Amen? I, I, can, get a hold of, I can get a hold of $100, I, you know. But boy, once you start getting it into a million dollars, they say, they say you can take a million dollars and put it in a briefcase and carry it around. But a billion dollars is a, is a, is a pallet of money square. I think it's three feet high. That's a billion dollars. If you have a billion laying around, you'd like to. I, I thought about, you know, I thought about this. You know, what did they, what did they spend on, 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 the, on the, the, the Biden, um, the, the money they gave out, what do they call that, the stimulus package or whatever it was? Wasn't it, wasn't it $4 trillion? Do you, can you imagine what we could do with $4 trillion? Amen. As far as getting the gospel around the world? Buying radio time, buying gospel tracks, you're getting getting evangelistic meetings going. You talk about doing, being able to do a job, but this world they don't see that. So we're talking about a penny, a penny. It's a small thing. Our economy is based on a penny. I'd like to say this about pennies. Number one, pennies are one cent. They're seen everywhere. Pennies are an unusual thing, you know, and a lot of times they don't doesn't mean much to us. In Matthew chapter twenty eight. The Lord's talking to the Pharisees, to, to the brethren, and he says in verse 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Listen. He sent us. But the, but the important thing about verse, verse 20 and verse 19 is verse 18. What's in verse 18? Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me. Hey, the desire of the Lord Jesus Christ is to get the, get the gospel around the world. And the reason why we can go in verse 19 and verse 20 is because of the authority that he gives us from verse 18. Amen. If you're here tonight and you're saved, you know the Lord Jesus Christ and the full pardon of sin, then you have a commission from God Almighty to take your penny and use it for him. That's, that's the goal. That's what he wants you to do. Go ye therefore into all the world. So the command's to go. The reason we go is that God's given all power to the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I like this. Uh, we're supposed to go to the others with the same need. Amen. Let me ask you something. When you got saved, now think back to that day. When you got saved, how did you come to the Lord Jesus Christ? I don't know about you. I came as a, as a sinner. Amen. Amen. I was aboard the USS America, and I heard the gospel, and I heard, uh, 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 I heard Oliver Green preach on hell. I'd never heard anything like that before in my life. Amen. I came out of Illinois, a bunch of Swedish Baptists. If they, did, if they believed in hell, they never preached on it. <laughs> I never heard about it. And my old Oliver Green preached on hell for about 45 minutes. After a while, the floor was getting hot. Amen. It was wild. And I re but, so, but I realized, see, that's the point where the Lord brought me to, to re so I could come to him as a sinner. Hey, that Bible says that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He didn't come to save good people. They don't need saving. That's, for, and that's, that's, that's their thought. Amen. Yeah, you, go, you talk to any, any religious person, I'll have you know I've been baptized. In the Methodist Church, I give, Amen, Amen. I, you know, I'm faithful. I'm there. All, you know, I play the organ. In the those are good things, <laughs> but that's not salvation. Salvation is a sinner coming to the Savior. Hey, if you'll present yourself as a sinner, 
then I got news for you. The Lord Jesus Christ will show himself as the Savior, and he will save your soul. Amen. Amen. So how do you know that? He did it to me. Amen. Yeah. We go around here and talk, and we get testimonies from each and every person that's really born again. They, they, they tell about a time, a place where they saw themselves lost, lost, and came to the Savior. That's, that's the goal. We're, we're supposed to take the... We're supposed to take our, our, our little penny and go to the others with the same need. They're sinners. We're, go, we're not supposed to go to others with the same feed. Willing, some folks are willing to listen. Listen. I mean, we are in the last moments of the church age. Amen. Our society is narcissistic. That means everything revolves around me. It's not... It's, it's not <laughs> The reason why the, the revival swept through America and different places around the world is because they, they, had a, they had a low esteem of themselves and a high esteem of the Word of God and the words of God. But now it's backwards. They don't care. King James Bible? I, yeah, surely thou jest. Amen. It's an ESV. That's, that's the one they want nowadays. Amen. And so, there, therefore, when you, try, you, go, you take a little chick try. <laughs> Tried to give one to a guy yesterday. He had a little kid in his arm. So let me give you a Bible story. Oh, sorry, I don't need that. Yes, sir, you do. You just don't know it. Amen. I, I've often thought about, you know, you, th you see some young kid, if the rapture happens soon, and I think it will, if you got a kid seven, eight, nine, ten years old, 12 years old, they're going through the tribulation. Seven years of God's wrath on the pennies of this world. Tough, boy, tough. So, where are you supposed to go? Years ago, I was in the Navy in, in the Kibi Point, Philippines. And, you know, the Navy always has a fire watch. They always have a watch in every building. And so, uh, the jet shop is a pretty big, pretty big building. And uh, they had a little office. that we, They had a coffee pot in there and, and, uh, and a couple desks. And you know, that was kind of the, the, the you know, OD's. Uh, room also, and during during the during the evening, the, the night when you when you had watch, you sat in there and answered the phone and someone called. And this back in the day of you know the rotary, you know. <laughs> and so I was sitting there, and 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 they had a window right there, and on the window was a was a ledge, and there was a bunch of ants that were, that were running up. They run up the side wall and they run across that window and ran up the other side. And I'm like, that's kind of neat. And so since there was a coffee pot there, there was sugar. So I said, I want it to happen. So I, I got some of that sugar, and I, and I poured it across their little trail. And here comes one little fella, and he's running up there, and he, you know, I don't know how they, if they smell it. I don't know. If, but he decided to take a taste, <laughs> and his little antennas went, bing, you know. <laughs> he said, oh, man, and pew, he was gone. And the next thing I know, here comes the mother load, you know. <laughs> and and in, my, my watch was, was uh, was it four hours normal? So this is about halfway through, a couple hours left. So by the time the, mo the, the morning shift came in, because I was doing graveyard, then uh, that sugar was gone. It was gone. So what happened? Someone found something good, and they took it to someone else. So let me ask you a question. This is the end of 2021. Have you this last year found something good in the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. So then the, the preaching application is, have you taken that goodness to someone else with the same need? Now, they may, not, they may not listen. That's the feed part. That's okay. Amen. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, they shall know that there has been a prophet in the land. God wants everyone to hear the gospel message. Amen. And the choice that they make is their choice. But you've done your job. If they say, I want nothing, to, that fellow said, I don't want nothing to do with your Bible. Okay. I'm, I'm, amen. So we're talking about a penny. We're talking about a penny. Acts chapter 17, verse, verse 6 says, And when they found them not, talk about the folks at Philippi and Paul, they drew Jason and certain brethren under the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. <laughs> In my life or in your life, if we were to talk to the lost folks that live around you, would they say those things? You know, they would may not use those certain terms, but yeah, he's one of them Christians. He's got a scripture sign out in his yard. 
Amen, folks. Amen. Amen. We need to be pennies. We need to be the Lord pennies. So pennies are one, are one, are one cent. What stirred those folks up in Acts chapter 17? Well, the only one thing, the death, burial, and resurrection, verse 3, of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the one thing that tears up people's nerves. They don't want to hear about how that he died for their sin. But that's what he did. Amen. And he's the only one that could do it Amen. to pay the price for lost mankind. So pennies are one cent or seen everywhere. Number two, I'd like to say this, pennies are stamped. They're stamped. I, I, I don't know how much pressure it takes to, to make a penny, the pennies, but they take those pennies and they, they, they put them in you know, the, the blanks and they put them in a, in a, in a press and that press comes down, 100,000 pounds, whatever it is, and it stamps that penny and makes that image on that penny that you see. And so there, if you were to take a penny and look at it, there's some things, there's some writing on that penny. And it says some things. I like to say this. It's backed by the U.S. government. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It is. What does that mean for a child of God? Well, that means this. I don't have any. I left my tracks in the, in the truck. You go somewhere. You have the authority to tell someone if they'll trust Jesus Christ, he will give them everlasting life. So what's, what's, what's different about that? Well, do you know that nobody else in the world believes that? Amen. Let's, let's bring up a Catholic. Well, if you do good and you die in grace and you have taken all the seven sacraments, then you'll probably go to purgatory and burn for a million years, and then we don't know what's going to happen. Amen. Let's take, a, let's take a church of Christ. You know, you've got to repent and be baptized for the mission of sins. And if you repent and be baptized for the mission of sins, you may not know if you're going to heaven or not. <laughs> Amen. But if, if, I, if you're a penny, if you're someone that's been sent, if you're someone who's, who's got the authority of, of God Almighty in his hand, that King James Bible, you can tell someone, he that hath the Son hath life right now. Are you saved? Amen. I can tell you on the authority of the Word of God and the words of God that God has given you everlasting life, not after you die, right now. Amen. Right now, folks. If you're saved, then you have everlasting life right now. Amen. See, that's the problem. We get plugged into this world so much that we forget that this is just a temporal puff of smoke. And one of these days real soon, we'll be walking down the, down the street, and this, this, corruption will take on, uh, this corruption will take on incorruption. Amen. And then, then we're going to see what really is real. Amen. Because I say, well, this world's no, God's going to take his finger, snap it, and it's going to, it's <laughs> in a moment. It, not just this world, the whole, the whole cotton-picking universe. 13.5 billion trillion light years. They don't even know how big it is. He's just going to say, oh, I need to change this one. And, and it's done. That's my God. That's who's dwelling in your heart. That being, he's alive. And he, want, he, he wants you to know that you've got, you got the authority to tell someone that they're saved. All religions say, well, if you do good and you're baptized, maybe. But as many as received him, them gave you power to become the sons of God. Man, you can, do, you, can have that, you can have that assurance in your own heart first. Amen, folks. And you need to have that assurance in your heart. You need, amen. You need to settle that in your, in your, from the book. You need, you need to get a hold of God. Not too long after I got saved, I was, on, I was aboard the America. We came back to the back to uh, uh, Virginia, and I started to go to a tabernacle out there, and they had an evangelist in. I, I'd never heard of evangelists before. I didn't know what an evangelist was. And he preached, and for, they had a week-long service. For two or three days, man, the devil just sat on my sh shoulder saying, you're not saved. This is, this is not real. You just need just forget all this stuff. Amen? She goes, Brother, how did you get out of that? I got a hold of one verse, 1 John 5, 13. And every time the devil began to speak to my heart, I'd go to the altar, you know, man, what's wrong? I, you know, you don't, I don't know what's wrong. And the, the Lord says, here's your verse, that you may know that you have eternal life. Over and over and over again, that, that thing would come. I, and so finally, the Lord gave me victory over it. Amen. But God, and that's what God wants you to have. You're here, yeah. you're here tonight. If, you don't, if you're doubtful about some things, you need to settle it. You need to nail it down. You need to say, all right, God, I need to know. If I'm not saved, I need to get saved. Amen. If I am saved, you need, to, you need to settle that in my heart so that I can have victory in this world. 
Because if you don't settle it, you won't have victory. You'll be up and down and back and forth. You won't know what's going on. So I like this about, about this stamp. In God we trust. <laughs> now, now we, in our, our, our finances in America are such a, such a disaster that we can't really say that much. And they definitely don't believe that, but I do. Amen. Amen. And I think, I think our, our, our dollar bills and our, you know, all, that, all our money and all that stuff is going to keep going as long as the one, Lord wants us to go. Amen. And he can take care of, listen, he can take care of you when the bottom drops, off, drops out. Amen. Listen, if the worst thing were to happen, what would we be like, the rest of the world? America has been so, listen, a Filipino carpenter. Let's do it this way. Brother Nene Takarte, he's the pastor of Mountain View Baptist Church. Each one of the, church, each one of the radio stations is, is centered in a church. All right? So Brother, Brother Nene Takarte is a principal of a public school, a big school. You know how much money he makes a month? $300. As a principal. What's a principal of a school here in, in, in Dayton make? 80000 At least, probably. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so if, if, if the bottom drops out, has the Lord failed you? No. He will make a way. In God, we trust. That's a penny. That's a penny. All right? What else about a penny? Uh, they're dated. I like this. They're dated. What do you mean? Well, this one here is 1994. That means that this, that in some, whatever, whatever month it was in 1994, this, pin, this blank you know, went into that press, and it, and it came through there. If you pick up a newspaper or you pick up your phone, there, there's a date on that phone. And it's not BCE, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's right, common era, era you, you, you heathen you. It's M, M, M. It's, it's AC, AD or, or, or I don't even, yeah, BC. British Columbia, I don't know. <laughs> Amen. But it's it's the day, it's all fixed from the date of the Lord, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't get away from Him; He's everywhere. So it's dated. Well, I like this on the back side of that penny. If you look at it, it says one, it says this: Liberty, Liberty. Luke at four eighteen says this: The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, talking about the Lord, because He hath appointed a. a Anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. You know this lost world, what's wrong with them? They're bound. Amen. Some of them, some of them are bound to a needle. And they got to stick it to, 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 to heroin or, or whatever, whatever drug of choice that they choose. Marijuana. Well, there's nothing wrong with the marijuana. You're out of your mind. Amen, folks. Or alcohol. So, oh, you know, I just have one every now and then. Well, let me ask you something. If it takes you ten beers to get drunk, if you drink one beer, how drunk are you? One-tenth, right? Amen. Come on, amen. amen. See, brother, you don't believe in Christian drinking. No, I don't. Amen. That Bible says, listen, I, I'm not real smart. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. I, I need all the wisdom I can get. So I sure ain't going to take a, take a drink of liquor. Amen. This world, they're, they're bound to pornography. Amen. They're tied to it. Amen. And the, the problem now is it's the young folks because of the, the stinking cell phones. Amen, folks. Oh, no, not in America. Oh, yeah, in Dayton. <laughs> Tonight. Amen. You need to watch out for that kind of stuff. You need to be really careful about that stuff. And until you get saved and in the book, you're bound to that stuff. I was talking to Brother Paul Gent years ago. And we were talking about, because he's in a youth ministry, dealing with young men all the time. And he said, Brother Howie, he said, these young men are getting saved, but their, their character and their lives are such a mess that they cannot get over the things that they've got a hold of. Amen. You got a King James Bible believing Baptist church? You got a King James Bible believing preacher. You better thank God for that. Amen, Amen folks. You got good godly music. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord for those things. Why is that? Because this world is bound by the God of this world, and they, are, they, are, they, are, they have no liberty in themselves. Romans 8, 21 says, Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. One of these days, the Lord's going to fix it. And that little phrase on the back of that penny, liberty, is going to be absolutely true. Can you imagine a world where sin is not prevalent? We can't. It's everywhere. Amen. But one of these days, <laughs> one of these days, Man, the king of kings is going to step down, and he's going to rule this world with a rod of iron. That thing that bothers you and I about, about the politicians and the politics is going to be fixed one of these days. But not until he, not until the king of kings sits on the throne. It ain't going to happen. Liberty. Well, pennies are stamped. There's an image on this penny. Mr. Abraham Lincoln, a great... Uh, Hater of the Constitution. <laughs> I'm probably going to meddle here a little bit. I didn't realize, you know, I, I, was, I was born and raised in Illinois, I mean, the land of Lincoln. But when I got saved, started getting into the Bible a little bit, started doing a little bit of reading, I re all of a sudden I realized there's a lot of things that he did that wasn't too, wasn't too kosher. Amen. He did, what, did, the way, did the way the habeas corpus Ignored the Constitution? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> there's an image on that. What does that mean? That means that one of these days, one of these days, I'm going to be conformed to the image of, of God's Son. I'm going to be just like Him. You ever think about the Lord Jesus Christ? He never sinned. You know, do you know if you're saved, you're, you're kind of schizophrenic right now? Because you've got this old man that if you let him go, if you just turned him loose, you know where you could be? You'd be right where you were before you got saved. Because God didn't save your body. He saved your soul, and he quickened your spirit. And we're stuck in this thing until he comes and takes us home. And then it's going to be shout about hallelujah glory. Amen. Amen. Besides, besides giving you back your health, amen, in a perfect body that's eternal, He's going to give you the right mind, perfect mind, perfect motive. Wouldn't that be, if you've been, if you've been saved 20, 30, 40 years, don't, don't you fight with why you do what you do after a while? But one of these days, he's going to stamp that thing in your body. And you're going to be able to say, man, hallelujah, glory, just like him, just like him, just like him. Pennies are seen everywhere. Pennies are stamped. Pennies are solid. What's solid mean? It's dependable. It's a faithful character. It's the only coin that's worth its weight. When the penny was first stamped, it was worth one cent. And it's the only one like that. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you much of a penny in your local church? Amen. Are you dependable? Are you faithful? <laughs> Well, preacher's always here. Yeah, he always has to be. No, not necessarily. But the idea is that, that you, see, you see, people sometimes, they get in sideways and they say, well, it's all the pastor's problem. No, he's not the problem. You're not going to have to give account for him. You're just going to give account for you. And so pennies, pennies are dependable. <laughs> Are you, are, you, are you faithful? Are you dependable in encouraging God's people? One time there was a farmer, and uh, he was so negative. He had his, his neighbor was negative, man. Just, I mean, if, 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 you, if you, you say, yes, I guess it looks like it's going to rain. He said, yeah, it rains too much. It's going to drown all, all the crops. And a week later, he talked to him and said, hey, man, sun's come out looking pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to burn up all the crops, you know. And it was, just, it was always something negative, something bad. And this farmer says, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something here. I'm, he had this real smart dog, and so he trained his dog to walk on water. And he, and he told his old pessimistic neighbor, he said, let's go, let's go, let's go duck hunting. So they went out, and they got the, got the boat, and, you know, ran out there, and they're sitting there in their, in their little duck blind, and the ducks come over. Bam, bam, we got a couple ducks. They come, the ducks went down in the water, 
And so he looked at, looked at, his, at, his, at his dog and said, Butch, get, fetch. So Butch jumps out of the boat, runs across the water, grabs those two ducks, runs back to the boat, and jumps in. And that pessimistic farmer looked at his buddy and says, Dog can't swim, can he? <laughs> <laughs> we need some faithful folks, faithful to encourage one another. I, I, just a phone call. Just say, hey, brother, just, you know, just a text. Why don't you know I'm praying for you, thinking about you. Hope you're doing okay. Amen. So it don't mean much. Hey, I got news for you. It means a lot. We need some folks that are faithful. Faithful in, in, in what the Lord's in, in encouraging God's people. Hebrews 10, 24 says this. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. It's not a bad thing to encourage one another. We need to do that. Faithful in the work the Lord's called you to do. Amen. Has God called you to play the piano? Play for Him. Amen. I was going to tell you about years ago, there was a, there was a musician who was teaching a Methodist Sunday school class. And he would, he would teach that Sunday school class on Sunday, but he was getting pretty good on the guitar and singing in the bars on Saturday night. Well, so finally, the Methodist uh, I don't know, leader of, of the Sunday school came to him and said, hey, you know, this, this is really a bad testimony. You can't do both those things. So Willie Nelson decided he would just sing. And that's where he's been. If the Lord has given you a job to do, it's a wonderful thing. Say, so, oh, it's just, I'm just cleaning the toilets. Hallelujah. That's a blessing. Faithful. We need some faithful. There was a, there was a shoe cobbler in Scotland years ago. And the, uh, the, the, church got, the, the church got a new preacher, and the preacher was going around visiting all the people, and he stops in on the cobbler's shop, and the cobbler's in there, and he's you know, putting the sole back on this, on this pair, of, uh, pair of small shoes. And he begins to talk to him, and, and, and he used some pretty deep theological terms, and the, the cobbler responded with, with his own incredible insight into the, into the theo theology that this, this, that this pastor was, was talking about. And the preacher was kind of astounded. He said, man, I, I, I can't believe that you, that, you, that you have this understanding and this depth, uh, and, and, and all you're doing is, 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 is cobbling shoes. And the, the cobbler looked at him and said, take that back. He said, what do you mean? He said, I said, take, he said, take that back, sir. He said, these shoes belong to Widow Smith's boy. And Widow Smith has no, no one to take care of her except her son. Her son goes out and sells newspapers all day long. And, and, and the Lord told me to, to fix his shoes so his feet wouldn't be wet, so he wouldn't catch cold and die. So I'm cobbling these shoes because the Lord told me to do it. And I hope that you're preaching and, and ministering because the Lord told you to do it. If God's given you a job to do, do it. Amen. We're pennies. We're pennies. Pennies are solid. There's no tax. It's menial, menial if it's done in the will of God. Pennies bring security. Pennies are solid. You know, if you got one penny in your pocket, you'd never be broke. When I was a boy coming up, uh, I believe it was, I believe you could get a, a, a pack of uh, Bazooka Joe bubble gum for a penny. But I don't think you can do it nowadays. Probably three dollars. <laughs> but that's it. They they bring security. If you if you got one penny, you never be broke. Can I say this? A penny needs other pennies. Amen. We always like to have more than one. Amen. And if you get Ten, you got to have at least ten more. That's twenty. I mean, you get you get uh, seventy-five, you can have a cup of coffee <laughs> for McDonald's in the senior menu. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Philippians four three says Paul's talking. He says, "I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, pennies, pennies need some buddies. There's something special about laboring with someone for the Lord's work." You're talking about going to start doing some stuff with the buses. That's wonderful. Go out two by two. 
Amen. What does that do? That encourages one another. Amen. It also holds, holds us to, to some responsibility. Amen. I worked with Brother Steve Avery in the Philippines and, and loved every minute of it. When he was down, I was up. When he was, he was up, I was down. Amen. But we got something done. Why is that? Because, because pennies need company. They work, they work better, better together. Pennies bring security. I'd like to say this. Do you know what the greatest problem, the greatest breaker of fellowship among pennies? The root of bitterness. You allow that bitterness to get in there, you're done. You're done. Years ago, there was a, there was a young man in the church. I helped my pastor. He started a church in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I helped him. This was back in 88 and 89. And um, had, an, had a guy in that church that Tremendous preacher, eloquent, great Bible student. And things, something happened somewhere, and he got bitter. I mean bitter. And it, it, it kicked him out, out of church, kicked his family out of church, hurt him. If, if, if you've got a root of bitterness, something's starting to bother you a lot, you need to come down to the altar and say, Lord, please take this. I can't handle it. Take it and lift it up and make it real big and say, God, would you please help me with this because I can't handle it. And he'll take it. He'll take care of it. It may take some time. Well, let me say this. Pennies are shiny. Do you know when I, when I got this penny, it was, it was pretty dark. Amen? But as, as, I've, as I've been up here, I've taken my, my thumb and my finger and I've, I've, I've just kind of rubbed on it. Just a little bit, not a, not a lot. Doesn't take too long. Pretty soon, that penny begins to get shiny. Say, so what's happening there? Well, a little friction, a little pressure. And you're, one of the reasons why God sometimes allows the things in your life that are the troubles that brings pressure and the things that, 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 that the friction that you feel between yourself and the Lord is the Lord's working on you. Why is that? Because he wants to brighten up your penny. He wants to take your little penny and put it up so the world can see it. And the only way they can see it is if you reflect his sunlight. The moon is a type of the church, of the believer. And boy, I mean, I mean sometimes well, that moon comes up at, at, in a dark night, and it just it's amazing, crystal clear, especially during the wintertime, a crystal clear light. Years ago, in about 2013, I went, to, went to, down to uh, Indonesia, and we went up on, on a little island called Kapong Island and to the Test Tribe. There are 7,000 feet in it, up, up in the mountains, no electricity, no lights anywhere. And you would step out of your, they had a state in, staying in a little school. We stepped out of that school and looked up, and it's almost like you could reach up and touch a star. And the moon came up over those mountains. It was, it was amazing. He said, well, I walked home by the light of the moon. No, you walked home by the light of the sun, reflecting off the moon. And that's what we are. All we are is a reflection of him. And sometimes he has to take, take, take your penny and put it between his fingers and rub it and push it and, and work on it a little bit to make it bright and, and shiny. Amen? And the penny said, oh, you're, you're tearing me, you're hurting me. And the Lord says, I, I got to do this to make you look right. That's, that's, that's what you want to do. Pennies are shiny. Well, I like, I'm going to say this. Pennies are saved. Acts 16, 30, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is in a person. Not in things. I think we pretty well said that. But let me say this about a, a saved penny. Do you know a saved penny that is hoarded does no good? Amen. If, that, if, that, if, 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 if all you do is, is, is take all the pennies you can get a hold of and, and, and put them in a little piggy bank and just keep that piggy bank, piggy bank does no good. Those pennies are worthless until you take that little piggy bank 
and break it open. Take those pennies and take them out and use them. God saved you for a purpose. God wants you to be spent in his business. Saved pennies are to be spent. We sing this song, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, for thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let it sing always only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages for thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my love, my God, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Pennies, pennies. How's your penny? Is it shiny today? If it's not, maybe the Lord's working on it. I hope, it, I hope that you'll bow beneath the pressure and say, Lord, take care of it. If you're here and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the full pardon of sin, uh, then, boy, your penny needs to get saved. You need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ and know him. Father, thank you so much for showing us some things about a little penny. Lord, we, we many times look at our lives and say, man, how God can, can you use something like me? But Lord, you, you, you delight in taking little things and lesser things and God using them for your glory and for your honor. And I pray that you take the pennies here at anchor and use them, Father, to glorify your name and strengthen those that are here, Lord, and help their, help their little uh, pennies to be used by thee and Gather them together, Lord, in your pile and put them in your bank and, God, expend them as you see fit. Well, thank you, Father, for your goodness and pray it in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Brother.